really the best. The hardest thing is keeping your focus uh, in the correct spot and not getting lost in your work. So we'd get a least common denominator. So I would do this first. I'm going to multiply by T over T and then T plus H over T plus H, right? So then I would say, okay, now my numerator here is 3T over T times T plus H. I always, I'm not lazy because when you get lazy is when you make errors. So I just rewrite it every time. I'm going to distribute negative 3 through negative 3T minus 3H all over T, T plus H, right? And that's all over H. Is everybody with me mentally? Why did we do that? So that we can combine the numerator up here. We have a common denominator, combine the numerator. Three t's are gone. So we have negative three h over t, t plus h, all over h. A lot of you got that far, and you made an error on this next spot. This is the same thing as h divided by one, Dividing fractions is easy as pi. We flip the second fraction and multiply. So then we have this, negative 3h on bottom, t, h, t plus h. I'm making it more difficult than it needs to be. Then the h's divide out, don't they? So negative 3 is on top, t and t plus h. Okay, good. A lot of you didn't get that right. Okay, if you didn't, hopefully you're able to see where you were not thinking right. Try another one. Okay, this one always throws people off. This is straight out of the calculus book. So it's a notation that gets people. So everybody think about what this means. If I said to you find f of 2, you know you take 2 and plug it in wherever there's an x, right? Yep. You'd have 2 squared plus 1, which is 5. Now if I said find f of smiley face, you would take and you would have a smiley face plus five, smiley face squared plus one, wouldn't you? Okay, so if I say find f of x plus h, f of x plus h, isn't that x plus h squared plus one? Everybody. So if I say take f of x plus h, you plug in x plus h minus f of x, and then all over h. Ready, set, go. Simplify that down. So this f of x plus h is saying take your function and plug in x plus h. So this will become, plug in that there, so you'll have x plus h squared and then plus 1. That would take care of that. That's your function when you plug in x plus h. Then minus f of x, so minus that. And then all over H. And then you'll continue to simplify it. Hey, back group, are you guys good if I go through it at this point? Or do you want more time? You guys are good? Okay. So then from here, you would say, okay, I'm going to simplify, but we can't simplify unless it's in standard form because we wouldn't know what like terms to combine. So you'd multiply out that, so that would become x squared plus 2xh plus h squared, right? <coughs> okay, and then we have plus 1. Notice I cross things out so I don't miss anything. Minus x squared, don't forget to distribute the negative, minus 1 all over h. So then cross out what can be crossed out here. Or combine that terms is what I really should say. So then we have 2x8 plus h squared over h. Now, a lot of people in second hour and first hour even wanted to divide those out. Not appropriate. You don't divide across addition signs, but it is appropriate to factor out an h on top. Then left would be 2x plus h. And on bottom, we have an h. And you can divide across the multiplication sign. That's 2x plus h. A lot of you got it right. Very impressed. Okay, next one. You have a good day. So you should be taking f of x plus h would be this. 3x plus h squared minus 2 times x plus h. A lot of people forget to insert it both here and here. 
Then minus parentheses, all of f of x, 3x squared minus 2x. And that's all over h. Now, putting that in standard form, you've got to multiply out this part, which we know will become x squared plus 2xh's, right? I'm kind of skipping. Plus h squared. Then we have times 3. Now I'm going to do this so I don't get lost in my work. Minus 2x minus 2h minus 3x squared plus 6x. No, plus 2x. All over h. And from there, I distribute my 3 in. 3x squared plus 6xh plus 3h squared minus 2x minus 2h minus 3x squared plus 2x. All over h. And then I combine my terms. Hooray. That, divide, or that cancels out with that. That's it, right? 6xh plus 3h squared minus 2h all over h. Then we factor out h on top. Left is 6x plus 3h minus 2 all over h, and our h is divided out. Hey, we did it. 6x plus 3h minus 2. Sweet, let's do another one. These are awesome. See, it feels so dang good. And then you can go back to your friends, mom and dad. What's that again? Oh, Okay, a common error is when people get to this point, they flip these over this fraction, but you can't, you've got to flip it over itself, basically. So we would have 1 over 3 plus h to the positive 1, minus 1 over 3, then divided by h. Let's come look. So just look at these. These are all common algebra mistakes made in calculus. This is straight out of the calculus book, what, um, what they said that common errors are. So everybody look. Errors involving parentheses. So if we have a minus x minus b, they forget to distribute the negative here and here. So it should be plus b, shouldn't it? Okay, and then right here, people will break the forbidden rules. Square that, square that. We know we can't do that. We have to rewrite that out. Now this, people will say, I can factor out a one half, which is not true. If this was one half a plus one half b, we could factor out a one half and we'd get a plus b. But where it's multiplication, we can reorder it in any order. So wouldn't it be one half times a half, which is one fourth, isn't it? Hey, errors involving parentheses, some more errors. People will factor out a three, but that's an error. What should I really be looking at? I can factor out a three, but it's got to stay in the parentheses, doesn't it? Now that's all squared. Does everybody agree? So that would actually simplify to be 9 x plus 2 squared. They factored out a 3 from the get-go and pretended like the 3 wasn't squared as well. Okay, 
errors involving fractions, people think you can split up denominators. You cannot just say this is the same thing as a over x plus a over b. Not true. Um, you, can, you can split up numerators, but you can't split up a denominator. The denominator is the denominator. Okay, right here, a lot of you are making this error. Dividing fractions easy as pi. So I always write the 1, flip the second, and multiply. This should be x over a, b, not that. Then right here, if we have 1 over a plus 1 over b, we can't just put the a plus b on bottom. I don't know why anyone would do that, but I guess because they're saying they think that there's a common numerator, so we can just add straight across. Wouldn't we need a least common denominator here? Okay. Okay, this actually I see all the time. Errors involving fractions. If we have 1 third times x, people will call that 1 over 3x, which is incorrect. Because think about it. 1 third times x is x over 1, which is x over 3. Correct. x should be on top. So same thing down here. Some weirdness is going on. If we have 1 over x plus 2, we'd have to do a least common denominator. We couldn't just add those together. Okay. These are huge errors I see still from a lot of people. They don't know their properties of exponents. Raise a power to a power and you multiply. So that's wrong. It should be x to the 6. Now look, this one's when you multiply the same base, you do not multiply the exponents. When you multiply the same base, you add. Did everybody hear that? It's hugely important. So this is not x to the 6. This one's x to the 5th. And then we know, we've stressed it a lot in this class, there is a difference when there's parentheses versus not parentheses. 2 is not raised to the third power here where it is here, right? Okay. Okay, are these equal statements? Are these equivalent statements algebraically? No, good. You all answered no. That is true. Isn't this, okay, let's look at both sides, but I want to point something out. Isn't this equivalent for sure to this x squared minus x cubed to the negative 1 power? And would it be appropriate to then negative 1 that, negative 1 that? No, that's the forbidden rule, isn't it? Isn't that what they did? Okay, cool. So this and this are equivalent, but there's nothing more we can do with either of those. And this is the same thing as this, 1 over x squared minus 1 over x cubed. And then we would need a least common denominator to continue onward on this side. Everybody good? Okay, cool. Errors involving radicals. People will just say I can pull out the 5, and we know we can't do that. That would be root 5 times root x. Right here, can I just cancel out that with those? Nope. Why? That is, I literally remember doing that in calculus. It's so funny. I remember doing that. Why? What rule is that breaking? The forbidden rule. Because yeah. why? Essentially, think about it. Isn't this x squared plus a squared to the one-half power? Right? We can't one-half that, one-half that. So hopefully this is making sense. Because if the algebra makes sense, you are least likely to do it. And then these are not equivalent statements. So like this is actually, this is simplifies the bit. There's nothing more we can do there. Does that make sense, everybody? Because if we rewrote it like that, there's still nothing we can do with it. Right here, we could factor out a negative 1, but we can't pull it outside. That's like what they did. So then we would have x minus a. So then wouldn't we have an i? Root x minus a, technically. Okay, good. Hey, look, a couple more things, and then we'll just start practicing these advanced algebra problems. Can I divide those out? Heck no. We don't divide across addition signs. Down here, what can I factor out on top? A, the left would be. A, the left would be. 1 plus x over a, and we can divide across the multiplication sign. Okay, what would the correct answer be? Are these both equivalent? No, so what is it? 1 plus 1 half, which is 3 halves, right? 
can divide those out to become one half. Okay, now here is not errors, but just here's what we have to get good at, okay? So we're just trying to get you to get where we call this algebra calculus, calculus algebra, whatever. Um, we have to get you able to see things in different ways, equivalent mathematically, algebraically, but in, written differently. Because in calculus, there's going to be times when it's better to write it one way versus the other way, which you're not going to know right now. We're just getting you used to seeing things that are equivalently written mathematically, but are just are, are equivalent algebraically, but written differently. Does that make sense what I'm saying? So everybody look. Isn't this side and this side equal mathematically? 5x to the 4th divided by 8. Can I pull out 5 eighths? They're equal, aren't they? Yeah. Yes, they are equal. Okay. What are these sides equal? Yes or no? Algebraically. Yeah, they are equal, aren't they? Guys, think about it. If we multiply, if we pull out a negative one six, if we multiply that back in, we multiply straight across. Is everybody good? <coughs> so they essentially factored out a negative one six. Are these equivalent? Look at them. Yes, they are. So what happened? They pulled out a 2, divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. Isn't that what we'd have to do? So yeah, they are equal mathematically. Okay, now we know that if we were in our class, if we were given something like this, we'd go this way, right? We would then flip it. But it's just interesting because in calculus, you would always rather deal with multiplication instead of, instead of division. So you would go backwards. If you were given a problem right here and asked, do calculus on it, you would rewrite it like this as multiplication most of the time. So it's just getting things written, seeing that things can be written differently. Are these two things equal? Yes. Now in our class, this would be prettier technically, and then we could rationalize the denominator. But in calculus, this would be prettier because multiplication, once again, is always better than division. Okay. Are these equivalent statements? They are, right? Because we know it's okay to go like this. As long as we keep all the denominator the same, x over root x, we can split this up. Plus 2x squared over root x. Plus 1 over root x. Why is that okay to split up a numerator? Because if we have a common denominator, we can put the numerator together. So that means we can split it apart. Now from there, we can bring these up with negative exponents if we so desire and get this. When we get that? So they are equal. Are these equal, question mark? Does everybody agree with him when he says yes? Yep, correct. We can't split this up. Does everybody see why? Okay. Are these equivalent? Yes or no? Are these ones equal, the top one I've underlined them? Yes, they're the same. Think about it. Multiplication can be reordered in any order. What's a half times two? One. Okay. All right. Now, are these two equal? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Algebra never changes. Are they equal? Yeah. Oh, I think you're just, yeah, I see where you're coming from. It's my handwriting is not very good. This is what's connected on bottom. So this line should be extended. So then, yes, they are equivalent. Good point. Because if you think about it, we flip the second and multiply, so that would give us equivalent. Okay, now here is some weird things. So are these equivalent? Now look, 
On front of the calculus, you'll go and insert some weird fact, like insert some factors, but you can't change the problem. So what's interesting about this, if I take this problem, notice I'm seeing a x plus 1 right here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to want on top an x plus 1. Now, you're not going to know this till next year, but I'm just trying to get you to see things in different formats. So if I add 1, I've now changed. That's our lunch bell. So we added 1 and then subtracted 1. So that's just a fancy 0. If you add 0, you're not changing the problem, right? Sorry, I have a cough drop in my mouth. You're going to have to not get distracted. Okay. So then can I do this after that? Can I split up the numerator as this if I wanted to? Is that okay to do that? Yeah. Yes, and why would that be nice? Because then won't this become a 1? 1 minus x plus 1. Cool. Okay, now, oh, I spit the thing out in front of you. That's embarrassing. Okay, do number 7 on the worksheet and number 9. Describe and correct the error. So in words, describe the error, and then do the correct answer. So this is how you, what you would say. They shouldn't be distributing A to the top and bottom, which I actually see people do that all the time. Right? That's not true. So you, sh I don't know, how do you want to word that? Should only multiply... A by to the top, right? Because this is A over 1. So it should be AX over Y. Okay, do number 9 now. What error did they make? What, what rule did they break? The forbidden rule. So that's what you'd write. They broke the forbidden rule. So the final answer on number 9, the square root of x plus 9 doesn't simplify, does it? No. But that would be our final answer. Okay, do 17. Can you tell me just by looking at 17 what they did automatically? It's pretty straightforward. Right? I can see exactly what they did. Yeah, they just added it straight across. And you can't do that. So you would write that. Can I add... You need a least common denominator, so do that one correctly. So what is the correct answer for this one? True. Good job. Okay, number 12, what did they do? Exactly, yes. They divided over an addition sign, so you'd say that. So then the final answer is this. Like, there's nothing more we can do to that to simplify it. Pretty easy stuff. Okay, let's go to 19. It says, insert the required factor. Basically, this is asking you, make these statements equivalent by inserting something. To make them equal, what should I insert? Yep. You're like, what the heck? This is too easy. We factored out a one fifth essentially, then, right? We talked about how you'd see them do that. Okay, cool. Okay, insert the required factor. So notice they pulled out a one third. So to figure out what's left over, divide each piece by a third. So you said, I heard somebody say 2x squared. Good. So you pull out a third, divide by a third, divide by a third, divide by a third, giving you that. Good point. Okay, and now this one on 41, it says, write the expression using negative exponents. So what they're trying to get you, they're telling you what to do because you're not, this isn't calculus, so you're not knowing that you would want to do that. But that's exactly what you would do in calculus is rewrite it instead as a multiplication problem. 
So with negative exponents, will this piece become 4 times both 3 and x to the negative 1? And then plus 4x to the negative 4? Minus 7x parentheses 2x to the negative 1 third. Would it be appropriate to take 4 and put it in? No, because 4 is not raised to the negative 1 power, everybody. Pretty easy, I feel like. Parentheses mean everything, though, so be really careful. Okay, now it says write each fraction as the sum of two or more terms. So what is this asking us to do? Based on the instructions. It's not a trick question yet. Well, yeah, what? Split it up. Exactly. So go ahead and do that. So you split it up like that, which would be this, 16 over x minus 5 minus x. Good. Now, if it was, you could just stop there because that's where we would say is the most simplified answer. But in calculus, you'd probably go like this, 16x to the negative 1 minus 5 minus x. And it would be really easy from there. Okay, cool. Hey, now we're getting to the good stuff. So that was just the... Okay, hey, remember all these algebra mistakes that can be made. Now we're going to put it all together and simplify these huge, nasty things. Now here's the thing. They look harder than they really are. It's just algebra. There's nothing more than that in this problem. What you have to do is not get lost in the work and not have sloppy work and not make algebra mistakes. Here we go. I'm going to let you write this down on your paper because you're going to want to follow me through my thought process. I'm only going to do two examples, and then the rest of the time will be yours. So now it's just putting it all together. Let's not make any algebra mistakes. Write it down. Okay. So what I suggest is kind of focusing your simplification in sections. So everybody, I'm going to look right here and section that off for myself and say, I'm going to simplify this piece first. Okay? So let's do that. So let's reorder it. Think about it. Multiplication can be reordered in any order. So let's put this in the prettiest order possible. So isn't it true that 2 and x aren't technically connected? We can split them apart. So we have a negative 3 times 2. I cross them out so I don't miss anything. So I have a negative 6. Then I have an x to the 5th and an x giving me x to the 6th. Now times by all that stuff to the negative 4 power. Wouldn't it be a good idea to take and flip that under here? Is everybody seeing what I'm doing? So now taking that and flipping it, so we have x squared plus 1 to the positive fourth power. So all I've done now is simplify this section so I can cross it out. It's really all about keeping your simplification in sections, in my opinion. So then let's look right here. Let's reorder that in a prettier order. Looks like negative 5x to the 4th, so minus 5x to the 4th. And then looks like since we have a negative exponent here, I'm going to flip it. x squared plus 1 to the 3rd power. Please ask if you get lost at all. Now I have that taken care of. Divided by x to the, raise the power to a power and you multiply, divided by x to the 10. All right, so now what you would do is say, okay, I have two pieces here. I need to find a least common denominator and then, so I can continue to simplify this. So looking at the denominators, what's my least common denominator? Yeah, x squared plus one to the fourth. So I'm gonna multiply this by x squared plus 1, because then there'll be four of them. You see how that will make it x squared plus 1 to the 4th? Okay, cool. So now we would, I would, I just write out all my work, especially it's easier on the paper. I'm happy to write so big. So I still have this, negative 6x to the 6th over x squared plus 1 to the 4th. Now I have minus 5x to the Six minus 5x to the 4th, 
all over x squared plus 1 to the 4th divided by x to the 10th. And once again, now I have a common denominator, so I can combine my numerator. Combining my numerator. So we would have negative 11 x to the 6th, will I? Minus 5x to the 4th, divided by x squared plus 1 to the 4th, divided by x to the 10th. So then from there you should say, okay, dividing fractions is easy as pi, we flip the second and multiply. So we have this, negative 11, x to the 6, minus 5, x to the 4, divided by x squared plus 1 to the 4. And then what will we be times by 1 over x to the 10th? So then I'm just going to have an x to the 10th down here, aren't I? Okay, cool. Now simplify. Back to the top, back to the bottom, and divide out exact factors. So what can I pull out on top? Yep, x to the fourth, or even negative x to the fourth, since there's a negative in front. So then that would leave me with 11x squared plus 5 divided by x squared plus 1 to the fourth, x to the tenth. And now we can divide out x to the fourth and x to the tenth. Is everybody, was everybody able to follow that? Was that too fast? It's fine. So that became x to the 6. So I'd rewrite it one more time. And there's nothing more we can do here. Not too bad, right? Not as bad as it maybe looked. Was it worse than you thought it was going to be? It's pretty easy. Let's look at 54 then. Make sure you're writing these down because these are going to be on the not allowed to choose problems. I'm going to let you choose a couple out of each section and I'll explain in a minute. Okay. Give you a second to write that down on your paper. Okay. So the first thing that should be ringing a bell off in your head here is a negative exponent over here. Nothing we can really do here. We have 2x minus 1 to the 1 half power minus x plus 2, can't we flip this base downward? So then we would have 2x minus 1 to the positive 1 half power. We have rewritten this in an equivalent format, just differently. Okay, so now divided by 1 is what we're essentially looking at. To put these together, don't I need a least common denominator? Okay, what is the least common denominator? Yes, so look everybody, over here, I'm going to multiply by 2x minus 1 <coughs> to the 1 half power. You have to do that to the top and bottom. Now let's multiply out our numerators so we can combine like terms. Now look, notice something interesting. Isn't this the same base? We're multiplying the same base. So what do we do with our exponents? Add them. What's a half plus a half? One. So this literally just became 2x minus 1 to the first power. All right there. And that's all over 2x minus 1 to the 1 half. Then over here, I'm going to distribute my negative. So minus x minus 2 over 2x minus 1 to the 1 half. And now I can put my numerator together since I have my common denominator. So since that's 2x minus 1 to the first, that's just the same thing as 2x minus 1. 2x minus x is negative 1 minus 2. And that's all over 2x minus 1 to the 1 half power. Now technically, yes, you could rationalize the denominator and stuff, but that's fine. Stop there. We're good. So everybody understand that? Wasn't as bad as it maybe looked, right? Okay, cool. So this is what you're going to do for homework. There's only 15 problems assigned. Only 15 out of this. And honestly, that's not very many, considering um, half of them are really easy. Like the first one we did. Okay, these are each considered a section. Section number one, 
section number two, section number three, section four, and then section five. You have to pick three problems from each section that we have not already done and do those. Three, so does that make sense? You won't do one through 18, you're gonna pick three in that section that we have not already done. Make sense? Okay, cool. Now down here, we've done two of them, so you'll have to do the other three, whichever other three we didn't do. We've done two of them, I can't remember which two. So you wanna, you'll wanna write down what each section is. Now here is one thing I want to offer you. Algebra just comes with practice. Being good at algebra comes with practice, so I really want to assign more than that, to be honest, but I felt like that's a bit much where they're hard. So I am going to offer bonus on any test of your choice for this quarter. So you could go do it at the end of the quarter. You could put it in whatever test you want. Per five problems, you'll get a 1% increase. So additional five, an additional five problems. So let's say that there were five more problems in each section you wanted to do. That'd be a one, two, three, four percent increase. Does that make sense? Every five additional problems you do that you have not done as homework or that we have not done together would be a 1% increase. But here's what you have to do. You have to get the correct answer. You have to show your work. And that needs to be on a separate sheet of paper, not on the homework paper. Because that gets really confusing for me. Yes. Yeah, Yeah, because we've done two of those. So yeah, do all of those, because we've already done two of them. So then that would be the three that you have to do. The three left over, yeah. Uh-huh. Does the bonus thing make sense? Did you all hear that you need to do that on a separate sheet of paper called bonus problems? And then I'm going to go through and say, okay, they did this problem. Did they get it right? Where's their work? Okay, yeah, their work does make sense. Yep, they got it right. And I'm going to count up five problems. Check, they get 1% increase. Does that kind of make sense? Yes. Yeah, it has to be besides what's already required. 